Hi everyone. I've been making a lot of videos about threading recently, and I really want to scratch an itch that's been annoying the back of my brain for quite some time. It has to do with thread wires, specifically the different ways of holding those wires so they don't just drop straight down into the bottomless abyss of your chip pen. What I really want to know is whether using something to hold the wires in place will affect the measurement. So I'm going to test four commonly used methods and compare them to using nothing at all. So clear out your chip pan, drop your wires on the subscribe button, and let's get to testing. First of all, let's establish our baseline with no holding aids whatsoever. We're going to measure this thread that I just cut for another video I'm working on. It's not being lazy, it's being efficient, okay? When you're measuring with thread wires, it's a good idea to put a towel or rag down to catch them if they fall. Clear out the chip pan as well, just in case. These things will disappear in even a small pile of chips. Two wires will go on one side of the thread, and one will go on the other. It doesn't matter which is which. Then, you just measure over the wires with your micrometer. I'm going to pinch the wires in my fingers and slip them over the thread, then hold them there until I can get my mic closed down on them. Then, I'll be able to release them while I get my reading. This seems to be a little easier to hold onto the wires without dropping them. The measurement I'm getting is 1.023 inches. Let's try out some holding tricks and see if the measurement stays the same. I normally use a dab of grease to hold two of the wires, which I've shown in a number of videos. This is a very quick, easy, and accessible trick for most machinists. After all, there's certainly no shortage of grease in machine shops. I also don't think it'll change the measurement. The grease should just squish out of the way, and the wires will self-align like they would with nothing. It shouldn't matter what kind of grease you use, although I don't recommend using anti-seize unless you want to dye everything in your shop silver. You can put the grease directly on the threads, or just put some on the wires. They both work well. For this trick, I'm putting the two wires on top so gravity isn't working against me. Then, the lone wire can easily be handled on the bottom side to get the measurement which is 1.023 again, the exact same as I got with nothing at all. Next to grease, rubber bands are probably the most common way of wrangling the wires. I've seen this done two ways, holding all three wires and holding just two with the other one free-floating like with the grease trick. I'll try it both ways just to be sure, but I'll be pretty surprised if holding all three wires doesn't affect the measurement. There's just no way you're going to get the wires perfectly aligned, and there's going to be quite a bit of resistance from the rubber band, so I don't think they'll self-align. You have to make sure the rubber band isn't going to prevent you from making the measurement as well. There are certainly a bunch of different ways to loop this rubber band around the wires, and there's no reason to think you should only use one rubber band. Use whatever works for the job. When holding all three wires, my measurement was 1.0232 inches, so not too far off the baseline at all. This was much closer than I thought it would be. The rubber band flexed pretty easily and let the wires self-align. Having one wire floating free should be the more accurate option here since you won't have an alignment problem. You should spread the rubber band out a bit so it won't be in the way of the micrometer. Holding just two wires netted me a measurement of 1.0229. Again, not too far off. Another issue with using rubber bands for this is finding one that's able to hold the wires, but not so tight that it'll bend them. This is definitely a concern when using the thinner wires in the set. Overall, I think this method is more trouble than it's worth. It's a pain to get the rubber band onto the wires, and this is something you'll need to put on and take off repeatedly between passes. Finding just the right rubber band for the job can be a hassle as well. They always seem to be too short or too long, too thin or too thick, basically everything other than what you want. You also have to resist the overwhelming urge to start a rubber band war with your coworkers. It would start small, as most wars do. A light skirmish over some annoying indiscretion. Then a surprise attack when they're at their most vulnerable. Before long, it escalates to a major conflict, one that can't be contained by mere diplomacy. It spills over to the tool room, the offices, to every corner of the plant. 
Old alliances are pressed to join an ever-widening conflagration. Both sides start using heavier weapons, then the nuclear option. In the end, all that is left are barren fields littered with latex and death, and a lonely few survivors who are unsure how it all began. Anyway, let's talk about floral foam. Floral foam can be found at any craft store. It's a very lightweight foam used to arrange artificial flowers. The ease of sticking things into this is why some people like to use it to hold the thread wires. This is one that I can easily see going badly or exceedingly well. On the one hand, you're constraining the motion of the wires on one end so they might not be able to align themselves. On the other hand, this foam is really soft so it may not matter. I tried sticking the wires in just a little bit to keep them as flexible as possible, but they kept falling out. Having them sticking farther in made them too stiff and it definitely affected the measurement, which was 1.0276 inches. The difference between that and my baseline was almost as much as the entire range I had to work with for pitch diameter. I also tried to pull the foam off once the mic was engaged and I got a measurement of 1.0234. That's much closer, but the whole affair was very, very awkward. I'm at a loss for why anyone uses this method. It's way more work than just handling the wires all by themselves. It's not very accurate, and the foam leaves this green powder that just gets everywhere. If you're a floral foam aficionado, please let me know why down in the comments. I'm really very curious. Modeling clay is in the same boat as floral foam. My guess is that it's going to hold the wires in a way that makes alignment difficult, but again, the material's soft, so it may not matter at all. I will say that this is much easier to hold onto than the floral foam. The wires are held very well by the clay, and it seems pliable enough to allow the wires to move. You can see how the holes have wallowed out quite a bit. When stuck in the clay, the measurement was 1.0238. That's not fantastic, but much closer than I thought it would be. I decided I would remove the clay just like I did with the foam, and the measurement came in right at 1.023, which is our baseline. The clay is very sticky, and it was a good bit harder to remove it from the wires than the foam was, so I don't recommend trying to do that. I can definitely see why people would like using clay, though. It was easy to hold on to, and the wires didn't move around too much side to side. However, the clay left a residue on the end of the wires that is very difficult to remove. I'm not entirely sure that I used this trick correctly, so if you're an avid clay user, please feel free to correct my technique down in the comments. Overall, if you're going to use one of these wire holding techniques, go with the grease. It was hands down the winner in my opinion, and it wasn't even close. It was just fast and easy and didn't affect the measurement. Aside from a little extra cleanup to get rid of the grease, I can't think of any cons to it. Most importantly, everything was consistent. I knew the two wires were going to stay put and the third wire was easy to control. To me, this alone gave it an edge over the competition, including using nothing at all. The biggest issue with not using a holding aid whatsoever was keeping the wires in their threads. They just kept wanting to pop over and see their neighbor next door. Rubber bands worked well enough when holding just two wires, but failed in the ease of use department. It was quite a production getting the wires installed, and considering that you would be measuring the threads multiple times throughout the job, this is really a non-starter for me. The foam and the clay were certainly techniques. Given the choice between the two, I'd go with the clay despite my wires looking like they were used to give Gumby a colonoscopy. I would rather try to spoon a badger than use floral foam again, and I'm talking about the American badger too, not those cuddly little European ones. Let me know what you think down in the comments, either about the three wire method or about badgers. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there, and please consider supporting my channel over on Patreon like these amazing human beings. Did this video leave you craving more of my content? Well, lucky you. In the top left, I have my most recent video. In the bottom left, I have a video that YouTube thinks you'll like. And over on the right, I have a playlist of all of my other machining test videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.